So, hello everybody and welcome to this course of uh, ambient intelligence that you selected uh, among the elective courses of the third year. Hope oh, if I'm not in the wrong room. Okay, we are here for uh, ambient intelligence. So, uh, today we spend uh, some words uh, or some hours actually uh, about the introduction. Uh, to the course uh, and the introduction to the uh, topic of the course this uh, and this what, what this we start to see what this ambient intelligence keywords uh, really mean hmm? okay my name is Fulvio Corno as you know as it's written there and I'm the main teacher of the course and uh, uh, as, uh, as you know the all the material about the course uh, we, are, we sent you an email some days ago uh, is available and will be available during the course uh, uh, at this website here okay so this is the most important information from which uh, you can you know uh, find all other uh, information that you need we are not using the portale la didattica for storing the uh, teaching material everything will be on this site hmm? on this website uh, so just a, a quick before uh, going to the more formal introduction just a quick glance uh, about uh, what this course is uh, so what are the main points uh, uh, of the organization and the, on the content of this course so this uh, the ambient intelligence course is uh, projects basically what we are doing together in the next uh, 60 hours plus many more on your side uh in the next 60 hours are projects so you will work uh, with your friends uh, to create uh, and implement and prototype and present uh, practical projects every one of you or every group of you will uh, uh, develop their own projects uh, that you will choose you will select uh, and uh, you will uh, uh, be able to develop in the course and these projects of course will have the characteristics of an projects for implementing an uh, intelligent environment and ambient intelligence systems and then an MEI systems as we, as we will call it during the course MEI is teams so you need uh, to work in groups uh, groups of uh, three or four students uh, groups of students that may have uh, different backgrounds uh, may have different uh, languages uh, may have different skills uh, but nevertheless, uh, they will work together uh, to create uh, the best uh, project uh, uh, to be presented at the exam and to have the full scores at the exam and to be proud of what they did. Okay, so uh, the additional, so one, one, one of the difficulty of the course is, is uh, um, having at the end of the course a complete project done, completed not just being able to pass an exam there is no exam in this course the exam is the presentation of your project but the project must be, must be finished must be complete must be, must be functional so it's a new kind of challenge it's not a matter of knowing enough stuff uh, for the uh, exam date but being able to build something that you decide you plan you implement with our help probably but it's your work at the end and the second skill is working together projects are too complicated too long too complex to be developed by one person that's why we suggest or we require groups of three or four people to work and okay being more people means being having more time more effort more work to be done but also means coordinating and sharing information and uh, you know uh, ensuring that the work progress and everybody and this will be the, one, the main difficulty everybody understands this, the project in the same way so we all agree huh? you all agree on what you have to do and uh, this they call it a soft skill let's say <coughs> so something that you need to learn in order to be uh, proficient uh, at, at work actually at, at developing uh, and and uh, more mm, a lot of time will be devoted in the course here just to give you time to work together hmm. we see that in the in the course organization of course uh, mei is not just uh, teams it's also technology so we we learn 
many different devices, technologies, languages, protocols, um, servers, uh, um, APIs, libraries, uh, um, whatever, I don't know. Uh, a lot of, stu of technical stuff and how to put it together. So the difference between other technical courses in the engineering curriculum is that many courses have a vertical approach. In this course, we'll uh, talk about, I uh, know, database systems. So everything is a database. We, you only learn about that in that course. In that course, uh, you learn about, uh, I don't know, uh, digital circuits. So everything in a state machine is a, a logical gate, is a VHDL statement, and so on. So you learn a lot of verticals, a lot of skills, deep skills, in individual technologies. Here, we won't uh, spend much time in learning new technologies, but we will, learn, we will spend time in trying to put together the things that you already know, or things that you maybe don't know that you are already knowing, but actually you do. So you discover that, okay, I, I'm able to do this. And you, sh you should pick from the knowledge that you, that you had in your previous courses and use this knowledge for building something. Of course, we'll uh, develop, we'll use, we'll show you how a language, for example, an environment that makes it easy to put together different subsystems. So the focus of this course is not of new technology stacks or new verticals, but uh, on integration. There's a lot of things that are already there. There are already sensors, there are already devices, there are already um, computers and so on. We need to make them work together. We don't need to build uh, any new device, any new sensor, but to take what is existing and make them work together to build the system. So in this course, we don't develop devices, we don't develop technologies, we develop systems, yeah? which is putting together something that is already existing or should be modified or should be created, but the focus is not on the device itself, rather on the system that will host the device. And of course, for doing that, you know, it's not just a, a thinking exercise, it's a programming ex exercise, so we will need uh, to learn a lot of tools. Tools may be languages, tools may be software, tools may be frameworks, tools may be platforms, tools may be devices, and so on. Mm. I I don't, I'm not saying that every group of, of every project will use uh, all of these technologies, but yes, or nearly, uh, nearly yes, okay. Uh, because actually it's all, uh, all a lot of different components. Because you know, the world is very different if you, mm, in a system, you must uh, develop or integrate a sensor to be put somewhere, so you need to go onto the interface in the sensor. So going very low level, the electrical levels, uh, uh, the, the, the electronic interfacing, and then the programming on the small board that will read the data of the sensor. And so that's one part of programming. Uh, but then this data needs to be sent to some other node, to some other computer. So you need some network knowledge. So not just the device knowledge, also the network knowledge. And then this data will be collected by a database. So we need a database. And we need an interface. So we need a, a create, to create a website. And maybe this interface will also be in mobile. So we need to create an Android application. And so everything that we take for granted when we think about a new system, it's comprised of many different technologies. That's also why huh, it's useful to work in groups, because in a group maybe some people are more you know hardware ori oriented, some people are more network oriented, some people are more algorithm oriented, some are more interface oriented, and so on. So having a, a, a good group working together is not having four people that actually have the same kind of mind but having people with different skills so that everyone can, or that you can split the work no? according to uh, the domains where each of you is working at its best. Hmm? But nevertheless, we, I, I said before that we are not learning anything new. Actually, we are learning a lot of new stuff, uh, not in depth, but just enough to be used uh, to be put together with the rest. 
uh, well, we uh, at the end of the of the course there were some student groups that were also went outside and presented their work uh, at some startup fair and something like that. So it's something that uh, I will encourage you to do. We will help you if you want uh, to continue the project that you are doing here or just to present it or to show it or to discuss it. You can count on us. We'll try to create for you opportunities for you know, for showing, for developing, for meeting uh, people. Uh, if you want to, if you believe in your project and you want to take it forward uh, after the end of the course, of course. Okay, but this is something for later. And uh, and for this, we also had some some public events in which we actually uh, discussed and presented uh, the results. Uh, or of, uh, of the projects of, of the projects uh, of previous students okay so these are the big picture mm? so it's not something to spend the time uh, uh, just on writing code but may much time will be spent on planning on discussing on designing actually and then implementing implementation is also important but it's not the main focus okay okay so actually more formally the goal of the course is uh, well learning to design an intelligent environment what's that well it's a place where users walk into that intelligent place feel that the environment the, the ambient is in some way helping them is in some way facilitating their life is in some way anticipating their needs okay and uh, uh, this means that we'll see that the environment must have some sort of sensors must have some sort of algorithms uh, some sort of uh, actuators to change the environments according to the user behavior and so on we'll go into details about that so to to create an intelligent environment we need a lot of technology layers that's that's one that's for granted okay that it doesn't scare us and uh, but to ensure that the we really create an intelligent environment and not just uh, an environment with a lot of technology in it we must be sure that the behavior of the system delivers something useful for the users the focus is not oh look how many sensors i put into the into your environment and who cares okay look how many buttons are there in this interface who cares look how i simplify your life in this context in this situation this is the important thing so we should start uh, or learn a bit uh, thinking outside engineering that's you should try to forget for a moment uh, that you are willing to, to be to be engineers and start thinking about the users what your users will want and what the system that they're going to build will do for the users and it's something is very nerdy very interesting very geeky and so but it's not useful for the final users you should drop it and if something is maybe stupid not so complex but it's useful for the user that's the selling point okay you should have a project ideas that you can go out and tell to your friends uh, to your mom to your family or whatever and uh, they will say oh it's interesting i'd like to have one in my house okay they should not be bored saying oh, i didn't understand anything but i love you no uh, i i i understand that this i don't understand how it works uh, because you did you, you didn't even tell me how it works but you only tell me what it gives to me what it makes for me <laughs> so being focused on the features of the system what the system will do the list of features like you know yeah, yeah, like in a brochure like in advertisement so this system you it's it's what you want because it does these three things that are key for you okay and then we will design the system starting from the feature we not we are not going to design a system starting from the technology i know how to program arduino for example so my project will be made of arduino wrong I want to create a system that matches some need of my user then I spend some time in finding which is the best technology to use 
maybe I will come down to Arduino, maybe I will find another solution. Technology is a, a means to an end, and the end is delivering features that are instantly interesting for the user. So we, you will be surprised, but you also will be very angry with me because I will forbid you to use any technology word for the first month of this course. I don't want to hear any technology word in the first four or five weeks here. Okay? If I see, uh, if I hear something telling Bluetooth, they will be killed immediately or, or, or something like that. Okay? Uh, softly. Uh, and kindly. But, um, so, because it's important to think about the system and the feature of the system. Then we are able to create or to you know, to implement, to develop, and so on, because we are engineers. But should come later. Otherwise, we are building crap that is useless, uh, that nobody wants to see. And uh, if possible, we'll always choose to integrate something that is already existing rather than building your own. Okay, why should I build a temperature sensor when I quick, when I can go out and buy one for 10 euros. The focus is not on building the sensor, it is on using it for something useful. So we'll try first and foremost to find existing devices that we can use in our system. Only in the rare case in which the, there are no existing device in the market, which is very unlikely, then we can think about creating our own or, or assembling or soldering our own. So the electronic guy that is in you should be kept at pace and say, okay, only if we need you, we'll call you out. Otherwise, integration, putting together something that is already existing. It's faster, cheaper, and gives uh, you a, a, a shorter uh, row, uh, route to the, to the result, the final result, to the project. Okay, let's not spend time in redoing something that is already existing. Oh, this is valid for hardware but this is also valid for software don't spend a week implementing functionalities that are already in some library spend an hour in finding the library hmm? so it changes we are not evaluating you on the skills on a specific technology we don't care there are other courses for doing that in this course we are pushing you to use the, this knowledge to find the best way the cheapest way, the fastest way, the less complex way to reach this goal. And the goal is features, what the system does. Hmm? Uh, and at the end, you should have a very simple MEA system, which is really working. So at the exam, we want to see a demo, a demonstration of a running system, not just words, not just pages of code. We won't even look at your code. We will look and discuss about the system how it works, uh, why, how do you design it, what, what design choices you made, and so on. Hmm? But uh, the, the, the real point is this, it should be working. Something work. Maybe it only works once, okay, I understand the situation, it only works in that day, uh, but it should, in, at least during the exam, it should work. Hmm? So, uh, this can be said for a lot of different technologies, a lot of different systems, a lot of different solutions. We have to pick, uh, and so it's a part of the, of the design methodology for an engineer in that builds products. I'm a bit hesitant to use the word product uh, because if somebody from uh, um, management engineering hears the word product, they immediately think about uh, economic sustainability, marketing, design, and so on we are not interested in this here it's important because if you want to make a living with your product they should be able you should be able to sell them profitably and you should uh, uh, earn more than you do, more than they cost to you okay but it would be too much to also insert this here so I prefer to call them systems or prototypes better prototypes rather than products okay but just a, as an aside okay I say uh, any kind of product or prototype should have a similar philosophy hmm? as, I, as I mentioned before uh, in this course we have to choose one type of uh, 
products to, to develop uh, and we chose the, the domain of the ambient intelligence because it's uh, quite rich uh, and it forces us to do something quite complex uh, we'll see uh, later the, the what what ambient intelligence means uh, for the moment we just read the first three lines and uh, it's a system that proactively but sensibly supports people in their daily lives so it doesn't say the system that is connected to the internet or a system that is uh, Wi-Fi or it can be installed in your device or it may be or maybe not or may not be the important part is that it supports people in their daily lives so a system by which the environment supports people okay also these chairs where you're sitting are supporting you in a way it's a bit passive support we hope it works well okay but there's no much digital technology in there but since we have digital technology how can digital technology improve the, the kind of support that the environment not just the chair not just the desk the classroom for example may give to you this classroom will be will feel more intelligent smarter because it helped me in you know something Hmm? this is what we are trying to do systems that support people how through the dig digital technologies connected devices and so on we will later discuss about these two objectives proactively but sensibly uh, <coughs> so actually we are looking at systems where we have a lot of devices <coughs> i'm not saying it's not true a lot of sensors a lot of lights a lot of sensors uh, motors and uh, uh, microphones and no uh, speakers uh, lights uh, uh, presence sensor weight sensor uh, noise sensor whatever you want a lot of devices that will be needed for creating some applications for the users and these devices these sensors and these actuators interact with the environment so one way of seeing that is that uh, the environment measures I don't know the temperature and we have an application that gives information to the user about the temperature but it's also the other way around a user wants uh, I don't know uh, always uh, 18 degrees into the environment and so the user gives a command to an application that will drive some device to change the temperature for example. or better the two at the same time so there's a flow of information from the environment through the devices to the user and the flow of information from the user to the environment but we should not forget that the user is not up there the user is inside the environment so when the temperature gets hotter for example the user will see this information on the application but he will also feel it <coughs> feel it let me check if it's still working okay you should also feel it from the environment directly so there is a kind of interaction between the user and the environment which is a direct interaction and the indirect interaction through some application interfaces mobile application website lights on and switches that are in the environment so it's a closed loop where the user is inside a system that evolves taking into account that the user is inside and is doing something and is wanting something and the system will try to make the user happy hmm? um, okay in this context uh, we'll spend uh, the first uh, three or four classes in defining what is an ABI system that's for today and later how to design uh, systems in particular MEI system based on a feature starting from features so it's not a technology driven it's a feature driven design process and uh, I am stressing the word methodology or process so you will not write code from tomorrow first you need to understand what you want to do then to design it and after that you can start writing code or start implementing parts of the system we will enforce 
or will require you no, to follow a process where in the first phases you have to think and to design and to specify what the system will do and only then later you can start to implement it because you don't want to spend time today implementing something that next month you will throw away because you will understand that it's not exactly what you need okay so having some discipline let's say in how to proceed with the project and it's difficult for you i know you want to 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 start coding or start implementing right now it's not the right choice believe me and uh, okay we have some classes about the enabling technologies so we'll tell you something about uh, uh, Python basically is the G which is the language uh, programming language that we we'll use mainly during the course web technologies some of you already know something but we we'll try to level that uh, and uh, all the Linux and hardware development uh, for that we will use for actually implementing our system so actually we'll see some technologies and also for building systems and also technology for integrating existing systems and uh, and a lot of work or a lot of hours will also be uh, spent in group work so actually we're trying to mix uh, some of the uh, theory let's say with some not much uh, with uh, several different information about technologies and a lot of practice in this course um, okay so uh, practically how is the course organized so we are three teachers the first is, my, is me, and then we have Luigi the Russis and uh, Alberto Monge. Uh, we will share this uh, classroom and we share the hours in the lab, depending. So there's no fixed, uh, let's say, definition of roles or, or hours for the three of them, of us. Uh, more or less, we'll cover 20 hours uh, uh, each, so will be uh, an even mix. Uh, uh. In some cases, we will be all three together when we are. We will discuss your projects. Okay. So we'll try to be um, updated uh, and uh, discussing with you your project. The schedule, you know that. So we have this Monday afternoon that may be in this class uh, or it may be in the LADISP lab. Uh, on the website, you have all the schedule that week for week will tell you whether we are in the lab or in the um, or in class. From the faces, I see that we are not fully aware of that <coughs> so we go to the website uh, and uh, current courses ambient intelligence schedule okay you see that uh, today we have uh, two lectures L means lectures in and the lecture will be in this room okay and uh, okay then there was uh, the lecture of thursday and uh, next monday uh, march uh, 11th we have one hour of lectures and uh, one hour or 1.5 hours of lab el means uh, exercise in the lab so whenever you see el it means uh, we are in the display so in the second hour from 4 to 5 30. and whenever you see l or EA means in the classroom okay so it depends every week it will change a bit according to the progression of the topics so but the first week will be all in the classroom uh, the room for Thursday will be on the other end so just uh, remember that we are not the first but the last uh, classroom in this block on Thursday afternoon uh the lab is the ladisp lab i think you all know where it is in the ground floor behind the room number 12 and uh, beside the room number 16. uh and why we're doing that because it's it's not just a lab with computers but it's it's it also has a lot of uh, uh, facilities for assembling and programming devices so there are a lot of devices you can rent uh, or rent or lend and use during the uh, during the labs uh, some devices that we bought over the year so every year we buy some something new to enrich the, the number of devices that we have available and uh, the time in the lab will be more or less for the first part of the course uh, assigned exercise so we give you an exercise and you should do that uh, basically to learn python and web technologies hmm? and databases 
and uh, in the second half of the course uh, the same hours in the lab uh, will be for you to work on the project so we'll stop telling you what to do we will be there to support you but you will have time in the lab to work on your project so this the idea is that the at the, at the beginning of the course in the first in the first weeks uh, we have more classes and more exercises in the lab and these numbers are decreasing gradually and on the other hand the number of hours for your group work is increasing so as we go with the, with the semester we, you will spend more time uh, working on, uh, on your you see that in the last month uh, we will have no classes at all okay. and uh, all, all the time will be devoted uh, uh, for for your work in the in the, in the lab and in the project um, this means that we have to rush a bit at the beginning basically to give you time at least nearly one month at the end uh, to work on your project before the exam okay some words about us or you actually so this is the data i dumped from the portal asiatica on friday uh, it should be that 32 of you are students from um, computer science i think they are mixed italian and, and english students uh, and then uh well don't get offended i'm grouping these two together ec uh, electronic and communication engineering and electronics which is they are very close co cousins and so 24 people with a so it's a 32 people with a uh, computer science background and uh, 40 uh, sorry 24 people with an electronics background more or less okay and uh, something else Okay, other people with, <laughs> <laughs> with uh, mixed backgrounds, uh, and uh, that can be useful because uh, you, will, you will learn today because these eight people which are with a uh, motor background, let's say, so automotive or mechanical, will be useful later on. And um, okay, system engineers uh, are very close to computer engineers as far as uh, the uh, programming skills are. are are concerned and telecommunications are very close to um, to electronics so it's a it's a good mix i would say hmm? okay about uh, so this is about just the enrollment doesn't mean anything about you right you are not your curriculum you are not your scores uh, and so just uh, raise your hand uh, just to know each other a bit no i, I would love to know each and every you individually but uh, uh, we don't have the time for that, so let's, uh, let's try to do something quick. So, how many of you are familiar with programming? Okay. That should be expected. Uh, with web, 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 de well, web development. Okay, it's more than, it's something like 8%. Mobile development. Less than, half than that. And uh, how many of you use uh, software versioning? So Git, GitHub, the subversion, and so on. The same four or five people. Okay. And uh, how many of you have dealt with software requirements, specification, design processes, and so on? Software engineering stuff. You hate it, I know. Uh, <laughs> but we need it. And about uh, programming languages. Okay, support to do that. So the easy one is always at the beginning. Yeah, all the computer sciences uh, 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 say that they nominally should uh, know Java, HTML, which is something that probably you learned uh, at the high schools, more or less. No, no, nobody's really raising high uh, for this. It's only half, uh, half, half hand. Uh, some of you are working. Okay, we don't care. We don't use it. And uh, <laughs> You should have worked a bit with PHP, okay? So you may forget it, please. And uh, C++ a bit. Hmm? It could be needed in some Arduino stuff. And this is more transversal. Probably people coming from other universities probably have, have that in their background. JavaScript, it's a subset of people that said yes to web. C sharp, a couple of people. Bash, uh, operating system. SQL, yes to everybody, please. No? Uh, okay. 
I, I put it just to, to complete the picture because we <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is more or less the most frequent technology that we are going to use so uh, the main language of this course will be Python that nobody or nearly nobody knows which is good and uh, and the second uh, most important will be JavaScript for all the web uh, uh, technologies and uh, and the li the others with, with light uh, green color are maybe in some projects you will use them maybe not uh, oh sorry I forgot to call Java which is for Android applications you can choose between Java and Java or Kotlin but or Java and uh, and all the other technology more or less will be used so. You, we may have the question, but if we know a lot of uh, already programming skills, uh, uh, why are you choosing something that, we, that nobody knows? Okay, because I'm good, and uh, no, because actually it's not a problem. Hmm? You shouldn't see it as a problem, uh, and we'll uh, show you why. And because actually these languages are more designed just for integration purposes, for the high-level programming, not high in the sense of uh, very complex, but uh, in the sense of uh, being able to integrate and control different other lower level, lower level technologies okay so we need to learn something where creating web application or interacting with a database or reading data from a sensor is easy and quick and only three or four lines of code okay i won't be able you know, from c to create a website okay it, everything is possible but i'm not crazy enough for doing that i wouldn't be able uh, to read, uh, I don't know, um, the, light, the um, light level from a U Philips U lamp in C because you need to exchange data over HTTP protocols and so on. So we need a, we chose a language, well, languages or frameworks where actually a few lines of code can achieve a lot of work. So we don't get lost into the details of exchanging information and protocols and memory management and network communication and so on. We want to focus our code on what brings value to our uh, application. And uh, it turns out it's not uh, a problem because every year we have a, I have a poll like that and a lot of people say, okay, well, we are not uh, very familiar with these languages. So you said, for example, 87 in, was three years ago or four, I don't, uh, I don't remember exactly. 86% uh, people said, oh, I'm not familiar with Python. But at, at the end, over 14 projects all of them turned out to use python and these are the project that was successful for example okay so it, it works actually so a lot of people say we don't know we have very low knowledge of javascript and 12 projects out of 14 actually used it employed that in that project for their choice okay it's not mandatory i'm not mandating any technology you choose the technology we offer you some choices and you pick the technology that you find that are more useful for your project so actually learning this stuff is not is not impossible okay uh, c okay everybody was familiar with c but actually was used very very uh, not, not, not very much in this project because it's all, it was the only three projects where they wanted to pro or they needed to program some sensor with some arduino board and arduino of course is programming c you have no choice of any other language and so that was the choice hmm? so there's a mix of, of technology and we have to learn not yet another programming language ma pro but programming languages that are thought that are designed for integration purposes for high level design okay this is an ambitious goal what we have is um, a lot of resources which are basically all of them on the website lecture slides exercise labs and so on and uh, all the news and notices and so on for all the material that is there okay this is the, this is the easy part then we have we have some uh, uh, online resources uh, let's start from the last one slack so i is, i told you to try to uh, enroll and join this uh, slack channel here we you received an email with an invitation code and we'll try to maintain all the communications on slack so please don't write emails to the teachers because then one sends a mail to one teacher and the other replies there is no reply to all and we, we lose the communication in slack you have everything uh, there and we will give you more detailed instructions later about how we use this this communication channel okay so apart from the first mail i will every other communication notice and advice and so on we will send them on slack if you have questions to ask 
feel free to ask them on Slack huh? and uh, not, on, not the email. We start uh, with Google Drive, also we'll use it for sharing, uh, in especially in the initial part of the course for designing uh, the groups and the projects. All the video lectures will be on YouTube, so wh what I'm recording right now will appear on YouTube in a, on a playlist and also probably also on the portal of the didactica but with some days uh, later we are experimenting a new way of publishing officially on the portal even uh, um, screencasts that are, that are recorded with some uh, let's say um, not official uh, tool and uh, github github is also a very important environment a very important tool that today every developer is using uh, or at least they must be must know how to use mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, an environment for sh creating sharing and developing projects in a collaborative way so uh, where, where multiple people may work on the same project uh, and uh, see all the version of the project uh, uh, avoiding conflicts sharing calls and so everybody is uh, you know aligned on the same version of the of the of software so this will be the main development uh, tool try to use it and to exploit so more details about slack um, we in in the slack you 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 joined or if you if you haven't please do and you have, there's a general channel in this channel called general only we can write only the teachers can write so there will be the channel for official communication to everybody right then we have discussion channel uh, with, which is the channel where you can ask questions so if you have a question to ask please please write it in the discussion channel and don't write to, a, to an individual teacher uh, because maybe that person in that day maybe is busy and so he cannot answer there we all we will read all the messages and we will, we will respond to all the messages maybe the response is also useful so, for somebody else so discussion is where you ask questions or write ideas or make some requests or whatever random it, as the name says it's free so feel free to use it maybe you see something interesting out there you want to share the link uh, feel free to do that maybe it's interesting for the whole class but it's not something that we need to respond as teachers okay it's more sharing more information and then when you will create the groups uh, we will encourage you to create uh, you can you have the, the right to do that in, in this like to create a private channel private group where well, only the people from your group uh, can access, can read, and can write, uh, so that the same tool, the same Slack, uh, uh, that uh, is used to manage the communication between teachers and students, can also be used to manage the communication inside the group working on the project. Mm -hmm. So having a single tool for doing both. Uh, we cannot see the messages that you write there. So you are free to say very nice or bad words about us. We can, honestly, we cannot see them, even if you want. Okay, even if we are the administrators of the tool, uh, of, the, of the space, uh, uh, when you create a private channel, only you can write, to can read the content, okay? And uh, about, so this is um, one important tool. The other important tool is GitHub, as I mentioned. Uh, okay, it's, it's mandatory for us that you um, submit your deliverables, your work uh, using GitHub. So we will all, we, 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 uh, we will only check the contents that you create, that you push on GitHub, that you publish on GitHub, the website that you publish on GitHub and so on. So you don't have to send us anything. You just push it there and then we'll see that. We'll see it and we'll check it there. So that is for the mandatory assignments and for the mandatory deliverables that we are requiring from you. But we really encourage you to use uh, really the platform for development. So what we see in many cases is that people are developing on their own laptop and then when everything is finished, they copy it to GitHub. This is not very clever, okay? First, because the laptop could drop on the floor and you lose everything. <laughs> and it will happen. Second, yes. Uh, and second, not on the floor, but maybe the hard disk one day or another will not boot up. And okay. Second, because you are four people and the laptop is only one. So how can you work together? Oh, you're working together on different versions of the code and then it will be a nightmare to put them together. Okay, GitHub is 
be created just for that purpose letting groups of developers work together even if they are not in the same room so it would be nice to see that you can uh, learn to use the tool and exploit it it's there it's free okay it's a habit that is from it's important for you to learn for when you're going to work hmm? even just for personal backups is is important or for uh, but more important for group work uh, it's, it's essential hmm? today you cannot you cannot do in any other way uh, when you create an account uh, uh, my suggestion is to choose a nickname which is not your matricular number from Polytechnic. Uh, because your number, your ID from Polytechnic is something that will be, will hopefully, you will forget in a couple of years or sooner for, for those that are not continuing to the magistrale, the master. And uh, uh, so, but uh, your GitHub account probably will last for, or will be useful for you for the next 40, 60, 80, 90 years, whatever. And uh, in many cases, the, when you're applying to a job, one of the things that the employer may ask you is, may see your GitHub uh, page. What are you doing? What are your projects? What are your personal projects that you did there? I can, can I see your code? It's not code that they write during the interview. It's code that they wrote for my project, and it's there for everybody to see. Now, it's, my, it's the evidence of my skills. And if I contributed to other, to other projects, if I worked in groups, so, so everything is there. No? It's a very important tool today, no? both for development and, uh, development and for self-marketing, if I can use the word. So use an, a nickname that may stick with you for the next uh, 90 years. Uh, it's not just uh, the pointing ID. But, but uh, when registering the address, try to use the official uh, email address of the Polytechnic. Because in that way, you can go to the address and ask for discounts, which are only available for uh, valid students. Okay, you can have an, a nickname, whatever, and then an email that is associated with that, uh, which is totally different, and this is, will be private. The email will never be shown on GitHub, okay? Um, okay, we, right now, the GitHub for this course uh, is, uh, empty basically we will publish the, the various lab exercises as we go and uh, uh, once you have created the groups we will create the repositories for for you for working uh, for developing the group we will by default we will create a repository for every group but if you need more than one just ask okay we have an unlimited number of repositories available Okay, well, there will be a reading about Git and GitHub for giving you the, basi the basic uh, uh, skills. Okay, okay uh, as is normal for this kind of courses, we don't have any textbook. Uh, basically, the textbook is the lab <laughs> where you go and try and learn. But well, let's keep it short. Um, we have some links about the software. We will start by developing on Python. So grab yourself a, a recent version of Python version 3.6 or 7 is okay um, and for developing with python we use we tend to use uh, or prefer pycharm uh, which is a tool from the JetBrains company it's a very good uh, id for uh, for developing there's for developing in java the, the product is called uh, intellij idea uh, there is also the um, Android Studio, which is the same tool, but for Android development, and, for, and the product for, Py, uh, for Python is called PyCharm. You can, we can uh, download the professional version, so the full version, again, if you register with your student email. So you will have to uh, reconfirm your uh, status as a student uh, every year. So when you register, you have one year of free usage. Uh, of PyCharm, of all the professional, there are free versions, but you can you can have access to the to the professional ones uh, for as long as you are students. We will use Git uh, that ne needs to be installed, uh, you know, on your computer also, and uh, we will use it through through PyCharm. And later on, we'll use a database server like MariaDB, for example. The suggestion is uh, bring the laptop to the classes, especially the classes, the classes where you start uh, discussing about uh, Linux from Thursday when we start showing stuff uh, about uh, uh, Python and the programming and so on so that you can try the exercises 
all together with the students, with the teacher, sorry. Okay, uh, the exam. So if the course goal is to work with you to develop a project, the exam would be to check the project. As simple as that. So uh, we know that for achieving a single result, a product, a project that is working and can be shown, you will need uh, to put a, a lot of different knowledge, a lot of different technologies, and the four people in the group probably would have worked on different parts. All of this is part of the process. Okay. At this time, we will discuss the result. The result is the system that should be working and uh, uh, of course the just integrates all the technologies all the skills all the hard work that you did and um, and so the exam is all focused on analyzing the result analyzing the project uh, we want we really want people to work uh, during the semester a lot of you of you are not from italy or not from torino uh, you are coming back to your uh, countries or uh, cities uh, when the semester is over so uh, it's better to to close if, if possible all the exams during the, the, the summer and not to to, uh, to to delay it too much it's possible of course to to give the exam in any in any of the four official uh, days of course but we have organized the activities so that uh, you can reasonably finish the project before the summer okay and um, and uh, so the exam is basically the evaluation of the work group and this evaluation is made of two different parts one is the evaluation of the documentation so during the course you will have two different uh, uh, deadlines for upload uh, actually three uh, for uploading uh, information about your project we will check this we'll, I will see, uh, say more detail in a moment we will check these intermediate deliverables during the course we will give you feedback immediately during the course because you will need it for developing the project but then at the end of the exam we will check, the, we'll check them again and evaluate them in, a, in an exam context so during the course is something that we do for helping you during the exam is something that we do for evaluating the work of course it's a different uh, uh, point of view and all the documentation which is a, a website with some information a presentation video and so on will account for 50 percent of the score the other 50 percent is a presentation of the work the presentation that will consist in a short presentation maybe with slides and a practical demonstration and during the demonstration we will have a discussion asking questions okay how do you do that does it work if what if i want to change this and so on the discussion will be useful for us to better understand your work and will also be necessary for understanding the individual contribution of each other person of the group okay it's not acceptable that in a group of four four maybe three work and the fourth one only look at them and so on so we will have to ask questions to, to everybody, just to ensure that the contribution of the work, of, of the, that, to ensure that their contribution to the project was, was even. Um, these groups, uh, as I said, will be, must be formed at the beginning of the course, so that during the course, uh, every group will work on their own project. So this is more or less the, no, not more or less, this is precisely the schedule. The um, group, uh, the blue boxes, the dark blue boxes, are our activities. What the teachers will do for the project development. The red ones are your deadlines. So today, I will present the theme, the topic, on which you have to think about projects. So all every year in the ambient intelligence course, there is a different topic, a different theme of the year, and all the projects should contribute to the same general area. This is for today. From today to the 17th of March, you can start working together for creating groups and for proposing a project idea. 
before 17 which is a sunday uh, you should upload into a google document uh, the description of the project it's just five lines it's not very long uh, something that uh, will you will you will tell which problems you are going to solve okay on the day after the 18 which is a monday we we'll spend the hours in discussing your proposals so we say okay this proposal is good this should be improved this should be changed this should be thrown away and uh, you should uh, think something different you can propose more than one project so that if a group has diff different ideas several different ideas write them all it's, ju it's just five lines as i said it's not a lot of work so then we can choose say okay this, this is the good one these other ones are not so good so please focus on the first one and the other ones can be also used by other groups probably that maybe didn't come up with good ideas can borrow good ideas from others okay so that as long as every group has a good idea uh, it, it's okay so after this discussion on the 18 we have part of the week to finalize the discussion and so there will be some groups uh, that at that point will be final the group will be finalized uh, and the topic will be fixed they can still work it other groups probably will will lag behind uh, and so we need more time and discussion with us actually for testing new ideas and so so usually it takes maybe a couple of more weeks uh, for everybody to be ready okay it's not a problem as the sooner you have an idea uh, an approved idea about your project so your ideas need to be approved because we need to check they are, if they fit within the, you know, the framework of the course the sooner you fix your idea the sooner you can start working on it and thinking about what to do why in parallel we are teaching you something about python web technology database and so on that you will need for developing the, the idea okay um the end of march you will have to submit the first deliverable the deliverable is basically a website on github used with github with very simple just have a couple of clicks it will create a website for you with the vision of the project which is basically an extended version of the of the idea of the product so it's not a lot of work but there will be already something to see and this will be uh, the first uh, we call them deliverable a website with the vision of the project with the presentation of what you envision your project to be we will give you details about how this deliverable uh, should be structured and this is the 31 of march the first of april we'll discuss with you this deliverable this website so overnight actually we see you see that the, the deadline is on sunday and the discussion is on monday so overnight we <laughs> we check all the projects so that we, on the monday afternoon we can discuss them with you and we can say okay this is good it's not good you can try to improve this and that so we spend the hours in the lab so in parallel we you will do the exercise for that day in the lab and in parallel we go we will go group by group uh, by giving feedback about what they wrote uh, on the on the on the what happens if you don't deliver we don't care <coughs> okay so we if you don't deliver if you don't uh, upload the material there you miss a chance to have a feedback that's it so you will go in forward on your own we will evaluate again this available at the exam as i said but theoretically you could write them the day before the exam or well, not today the week before we will there, there's no during the course there's no evaluation there are no scores there are no penalties whatever okay it's all on, on your interest in following a process for getting the most help from us and for you also for uh, being sure that you have clear ideas about what you want to do the number one problem in projects uh, is not uh, technical di difficulty is that different people in the group have different ideas about what they want to do or what the project should do and uh, and that's why we we require you to write it down how oh, we understood each other write it down and then you will discover that you are thinking about different things it's normal okay there's no telepathy in this world we need to communicate <laughs> ideas 
and, and in writing because in words everybody understands what he wants okay we are enforcing that really hmm? okay uh, deliver one the same goes for deliver two which is uh, the, actually the system architecture and technologies in employed so after this only after the first of april you will be allowed to talk about technology not before okay i will close my ears and uh, after that we can start saying okay, this is the vision this is what what where sorry this is where we want to go and let's start to think about how we will go there designing the architecture choosing the technology that would be for the liberal two and at the end of the liberal two we can start developing okay maybe some things you already tried and tested before but before this point before the end of april there is the idea about the project is not fixed yet it can change so if you start developing something just for testing something or for something that you are sure it will be, it will be there but not the whole system you see that we are at the end of april we have all may and half of june for development six weeks where the project is fixed uh, you only have to spend time for developing plus the time before the exam in that period you always have free access to the lab during the the, the hours of the course and also during other free hours maybe you can go ring the bell if, if the lab is not so full you can go there and, and continue to work so the lab is always there to support and then we have the exam at the end where it will show us the result of all the work so it's a uh, very hard uh, process it will be very demanding from you it will be very demanding from us okay so we are doing many more work hours than in a normal course uh, but we believe that at the end uh, uh, you will be satisfied that you could uh, uh, create something for real together that it works uh, and is a, it has a quality uh, good enough to be shown to others hmm? that's the the, ma the main goal of us okay these are details about the the scoring of the exam but uh this is something that we'll discuss later mm, basically 50 percent about the evaluation of the deliverables one deliver one two and 50 percent about the discussion of the oral group okay the first step uh, of course in the first weeks uh, while we start uh, introducing you python other stuff uh, most of the, uh, of the of your free time will be uh, discussing among yourself create groups uh, of three or four students i'm not saying two to eight three or four okay uh students try to because it's a good number okay two is too low and five is, in, is unmanageable we find that uh, these are you know, hard uh, limits possibly with mixed skills so there should be some uh, sensing and actuating maybe it's more for somebody with a more uh, let's say electronic background some programming some interfaces which are more for computer science something about uh, the environment uh, and for this year's topic which i haven't told yet uh, maybe all the mechanical students can be useful so try to if possible to have groups with mixed uh, um, backgrounds and also if you have in a group uh, with a mixed background uh, don't try to how to say that don't try to to do somebody else's work okay okay in this course everybody needs to and or to learn a bit of programming learn a bit of web development learn a bit of this and a bit of that of course but then in the project everybody each of you should try to choose the part of the project where their own skills are more useful so i wouldn't use the mechanical engineer to do the software part and the computer engineer to do the box for example because it would be a waste of energy okay it's better if you if if you can you know contribute to the project uh, your specific skills hmm? it's not easy it depends on the project depends on a good design of the project depends it depends on a good working of, of the group okay we are not enforcing that these are suggestions possibly we miss skills. if you want to create a group of all uh, uh, programmers uh, you can go there you can you can do that we are not uh, you know, forcing that just avoid groups of all non-programmers that would be a failure of course by definition K 
okay, this is the only real rule, real rule, okay? The, all the other are suggestions for, for getting the best results. Okay, in the first two weeks, it's always a chaos because everybody has ideas. Everybody wants to tell their ideas, everybody. So uh, it will be a crazy time for you, it will be a crazy time for us trying to, to reply to, to, to all of you. That's why we have this Google Doc where you can write the idea more uh, more ordered fashion. You always have this instinct, I want to tell you now, okay? No, right now, and I want to tell you with my voice, with my heart. No, okay, it's good, I appreciate that. <laughs> but if you try to write it down, probably you will understand it better. Huh? And we will understand it better also, okay? So it's good for discussing, or, but uh, uh, try also to, to always to do the effort of writing those five lines uh, to, to present your ideas. In general, about the course, not just the projects, uh, not just the project definition, starting sooner than later. Okay? You cannot compress time too much. So start developing and start uh, working on the, de on the deliverables sooner. You are four per group, so you can share the workload. If somebody has some problems in some weeks, the other can, can join in and so on, but really try, try to do some planning. Hmm? Don't be too ambitious. We all want to, to save the world. Okay, but right now we are trying to, give, to get an exam. So uh, try to think about something that is interesting, but it, it has a useful minimum shape. What they call, uh, the colleagues in the management engineering, they call it the minimum viable product. The minimum set of feature which is viable, which is complete, which does something useful. If you complete that sooner, you can always add features later. But if you are planning for something too complex, you will fail. And uh, because the, the time will run over, will run, will run out, you will run out of time and uh, only some features some random features will be implemented and some other not and so there will be nothing to show nothing organic nothing rational to show hmm? so start, we uh, you will see that we always try to cut you down say oh, i want to do this and this and that no try to do one thing well one bring it home and then add something if you have time you will not have time i can promise you Okay, I know that. So, try when you're thinking about your project, try not to use the word "and." The system will do this, this and this other stuff. No, choose. If the system needs to do two different things, it means that none of them is strong enough to be valuable for the user. And so putting together two weak functionalities doesn't make a strong product. Think about one functionality which is strong enough to stand by itself. Point. Seek interaction, and you're already regret regretting saying that. Ask, talk, discuss among yourself, with your friends, also with us, of course. Go out. You have an idea about uh, something, I don't know, concerning, uh, you know, these guys uh, listen to music uh, out there. You have an idea about music, talk with your friend that listen to a lot of music. Try to present your ideas to them and listen to the response. Uh, we have people that go out, uh, one mistake you should avoid is going out and preaching. Ah, my project, this and that is very good, is very well, you will like it really. And the other person is trying to say but no 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 I don't know no, it's not useful and you don't listen no, that's the, the uh, it's not going you are not doing any good for your project okay trying to tell and the others will tell you which we have maybe 50 ideas which are the good ones maybe for you because you are very strong engineers these are stupid ideas they're not very common you want something very machine learning intelligent uh, and complex and so on but doesn't bring any value okay so there is no in this course there is no value in over complexity keep it simple keep it good hmm? and exploit in the lab okay uh, all the, the support that we can give you in the lab of course you can also work on your own 
in the second half of the course you can lend the, the devices if we have enough or give them to all the groups and then can work uh, at home or, on, or um, anywhere else okay but the difference is that in the lab there is some support there we the one of teacher will be there the student uh, will be there and so on okay um, if you want to see some examples about past projects they are all linked here in these web pages and there are also examples of the websites uh, that, they that you will create during the years maybe start from the closest ones and so on mm, I you can just click uh, on the on the pro of course there are all projects that are that were developed for different topics well, these were for living spaces then 2017 we have sustainability all the well-being this year will be different so you cannot just copy them okay but you can have an idea that every project has a video so probably start with that with that that gives you an overview of what the system does some of them some videos are very ugly so it's uh, i'm sorry for you but some are really, really interesting and uh, here on the slides you have also have some posters for some project that were presented in a showcase in a public showcase i don't know if with this year we will be able to organize a showcase for the project because it depends on the incubator whether they want to host us or not but okay um any questions about the organization of the course the exam the topics the groups okay keep them for later and uh, i want to spend the last uh, 10 minutes here before the break introducing the topic of the year so that in during the break you can start thinking i don't want any minute to get wasted okay so the theme of the year for emit intelligence 2019 is mei emit intelligence for mobility it's a very big word mobility means cars means streets means trains traffic lights pedestrians drivers police ambulances lifts why not elevators why not okay so imagine any contest where there is some mobility whether about the, the car bus train tram or helicopter plane which is the medium of transportation or whether it's the infrastructure road street uh, i don't know bike lane uh, um, any part of the infrastructure that can be transformed so any part of the of um, a medium of transportation or any part of the transportation infrastructure that can be modified to make it more intelligent more responsive to the user and so on okay and to help us understand uh, the um, the the white of this topic because it's very broad i try to give you some keywords for example imagine a solution in a, a place so uh, for the for devising and um, sorry let, let me get, get sorry go back for one second an MEA system is a system that makes an environment more intelligent supporting users in their daily lives remember the definition so first you need to find a place it is not something that should be applied everywhere it's a system that should be applied in a very specific context and will solve will improve the daily life of people in that context so what is the context the context is a place inside the car private car taxi shared car family car city car a bus public bus private bus small bus big one two-story bus each of them you know as a universe and every element of this universe universe has, has different needs 
people behave in a different way in each of these contexts people need diff to be supported in different ways in each of these contexts so each of them is a different project on the street infrastructure on a train on a bike it's part of mobility also rollerblades also i didn't write it a sidewalk it's a part of the street the street is more for the cars and the buses the sidewalk is more for the pedestrians at the bus stop it's part of the infrastructure a square an open space where vehicles are crossing and a metro on the metro vehicle or on the metro station so vehicles and infrastructure and a plane you name it okay so each of these places has different needs and can lead to the development of different projects you should choose one of these or one of the others that we didn't list here my project is for that place and a given place is used by different people different users that have different roles different needs in interacting with that space for example we may have a passenger passenger for a car for a bus for a train for a bike you know or the driver and the driver of a car and the driver of a bus are very different in terms of behavior, in terms of needs. A biker, pedestrian, a commuter, which is a driver, but a specific type of driver which does the same path every day. So it has more specific needs. You know, the more specific you go, the more you can see recurrent behaviors to emerge and what and th there is where you can act that you can you can simplify you can solve some problems if you have something that is recurrent some behavior some habits some expectations but you can talk about habits or expectations only if you know the person and you know what they are doing so you have a very narrow context we don't have to sell an app uh, to two million people okay we must have a system where we don't need to, to scale to any possible environment we must make a, a good work on a very specific environment there is always time to grow let's start with something with something strong on a specific case a taxi driver is a, another type of driver with very different requirements from a commuter from an, uh, you know a sunday driver or whatever police bus driver Police may be police on a car or police on the street. Patrolling the streets and with a car, with the hi on the highway, patrolling the roads uh, in, the, in, the, in the downtown, patrolling the sidewalks. Something maybe for a, a football match. We have a, where we have a lot of people converging and moving and having a lot of buses, cars, and so on, bound to that specific event or a concert. So they are just trying to throw some suggestions so that every of you, each of you may say, okay, I like this. I try to develop a project about this. Runners, again, users of the infrastructure, they're moving, mobility, ambulances, for example. And there's another dimension, which is the activities. Okay, I'm driving. For what? For going to work? For tourists? It's different, very different. Okay, the clutch is always the same, but the information that you need, the services that you need, are different. Waiting is, uh, I will say that uh, traveling is, um, is an alternate, is an, an al sorry, it's made of alternating moments of, of rush and waiting. You need to run and go there, and then you have to wait an hour. And then in, in 30 seconds, you have to go another place and so on. So waiting is an essential part of, of traveling, of, mo of moving. Uh, you are waiting for a bus is different for being we waiting for being jammed in a highway or in the, or in the center of the city. There are different contexts. 
uh, parking, being parked or, or seeking for a parking, or the act of parking, socializing, okay? So a lot of people have, tra uh, while moving, have an opportunity to socialize, okay? Not engineers probably, but... Uh, High speed, um, uh, for example, driving on the highway is very different from driving in, in, uh, in a city. So maybe there are different uh, scenarios. Mm. Uh, work, you're working at the same, sorry. Entertainment. So you have a motorbike and you go for just an entertaining ride. You don't need to go to work or to go to a concert or whatever. You just go because you like it. How can you like it more? all the safety issues make it say any of the previous things make it safer any of the previous key uh, things if you have kids or for kids or with kids which are different sharing trip uh, security and safety are related safety is the safety of physical person and security the security of the system and ensuring that it is working music is again something related probably to waiting hmm? also getting information when you need it so if i'm thinking of mixing a place with a type of user with a type of activity i already have uh, 300 different contexts and for every context, there will be some users with some behaviors, and we can improve those. We, the environment in which those users are moving or residing in that moment, can do something for them. Hmm? This is the type of project that we need to, to develop. We'll see later in the second hour after break uh, uh, the characteristics of the projects. Hmm? What we still we still haven't a good uh, definition of, of MEI, I mean intelligence. So for our, for now, we don't have the enough information for devising a good uh, project. We'll see in a moment uh, that uh, an MEI project sh must have, or should have at least four different parts. Interaction with the user, sensing from the environment, some reasoning, some algorithm, and some action on the environment. And this would be usually it's the, usually the most difficult part because why because we don't have examples what we have usually are systems that measure some data and show data to us you know fitness tracker only shows you information that they measure it doesn't change the environment it doesn't make the environment more intelligent because the environment is the same you only have the chance of seeing more information on a dashboard are dashboards the new type of intelligence no are displays making the environment more intelligent no an intelligent environment is an environment where you walk in and you always have what you expected <laughs> we see the example later so but we, we will study this diagram uh, in the next hour but this means that an MEI project is not a mobile-only system. Ah, I think an app for doing, no. An MEI system is a system, is not an app. It's not a mobile application. It's not software only. As much intelligence you can put in your software, a software is not a system. And it's not a system that can sense or act on the environment. No cloud only. Something should be in the environment, in the place. It's not some, something that can be remote. If it's totally remote, I don't understand whether, I, I can know whether a person is in here and what they're doing and what they need the most. Hmm? So don't propose projects, don't think of projects that are just mobile applications or just websites or just cloud uh, solutions or wearable only so everything on a device should be the environment not the device the intelligent part no hardware only 
no embedded systems only a system should be a mixture of all of this okay so if you propose a system we may tell you no this is just a sort of solution think about to integrate some sensors some actuators some hardware part mm -hmm. and so on no solutions that are totally automated a project for i don't know saving gas for improving the efficiency of the engine and so when you're traveling long distance you will have less uh, expense for example is not an ambient intelligent system it's an intelligent system it's an intelligent control system basically it has a better algorithm for managing i don't know the acceleration of the vehicle or whatever it doesn't involve the user in any way the user doesn't interact with it so that the user doesn't have any feeling feeling of the system being more or the environment of the car being intelligent to him mm. so there should always be some interaction involvement of the user the user should change the behavior of the system so the actions of the users should change the behavior of the system and the behavior of the, of the system should be perceived by the user because the user feels that something is happening differently you need to close the loop otherwise it's just a system that measures something and then uses this information but there is no return on the field back to the user mm -hmm. so users are again the, the most important part of the project you must have some sensing of course because otherwise the environment cannot understand what is happening sensors of different parts sensors on the environment sensor on the user social sensors maybe what i'm writing on social network is kind of sensing so understanding what is happening every project should have some actuation part so something that changes the environment makes the car go faster makes the door open makes the light uh, change makes the temperature change makes the noise uh, puts on some music uh, something that actually changes the environment you're in which you're living hmm? actuator of, of some sort and uh, possibly it should not be just a deterministic system like if i enter you know in the bathrooms here when you enter the bathroom the lights go on okay did you ever call that intelligent hmm? probably not so much okay it's just a, a sensor with a relay and the timer and why is not intelligent because it's deterministic it always does the same thing with a very simple rule uh, we can do better i think something that will adapt in some way to different situations can be programmable can be adaptable and so on hmm? um, i say that we don't want uh, or projects that are just based on cloud implementations are not eligible as mea projects uh, but cloud services can be used and very useful if you are doing you know, something that involves a planner don't write your own calendar man, man, handling routines we will use maybe google calendar it's already there we just learn we will learn how to interface with the with these cloud services always in the spirit of reusing something that is already there and not re-implementing it's not not always easy to interact with the system but it's always faster <laughs> than implementing them from scratch mm -hmm. so and also this cloud can be a sort of sensor or sensor or sort of actuators because through these platforms we can have, get information or we can change something uh, but cannot be the only one about it. it's a specific rule and then we try again this is a slide that we'll see after the break uh, to incorporate in the system as many features that make it more intelligent as possible we come back to that okay and additionally when we devise a project uh, we should uh, okay understand that we need to develop and show it at the polytechnic so we cannot modify the infrastructure 
okay you cannot bring down this wall because you need the larger space to experiment hmm? people won't like it or modify the electrical plant or whatever so we try to find solutions that are maybe scaled down ideally they are just are on a table and can be moved in a different place and assembled differently hmm? that are so in some cases we need to simulate the environment not actually re use it the real environment hmm. so we cannot uh, modify the environment maybe maybe we can add some environment so we can uh, simulate an, an additional sensor in this room we can put it there as long as we don't need to connect it or to change the behavior of the, of the existing ones because that will not be possible and also uh, must be feasible with the existing equipment so we have a lot of equipment of equipment in the radisp or maybe we can have in uh, you know, during the may the month of may if you identify some requirements some specific sensors specific to a specific simulator or whatever we can also buy them for you hmm, during the course it's always uh, uh, rush against time from the moment when you understand what you need and the moment where you can actually purchase and have it uh, but uh, and it was better to, to find or to reason about different alternatives but uh, uh, in some cases we can add new devices or buy new devices that are needed for your project and uh, you so should also think about how to demonstrate so I'm making a project for improving uh, you know uh, passing cars in the highway at 150 kilometers per hour okay a bit dangerous but why not but then how you show it we will not come in the car with you at 180 in, in the highway <laughs> <laughs> just to, to see your project okay so we should imagine how you can show it in a display in the lab or how we can show it to other people so some kinds of projects uh, are difficult or impossible uh, to show some others maybe can be modeled in a small case, scale or simulate or some parts can be simulated hmm? just thinking about that um, we can modify a bit some part of the ladispe okay very carefully but if you, if you need to move some tables or put some lights or some sensors we can do that because it's a controlled environment but not too much hmm? okay practically how to proceed i already gave you the deadline 17th of march there is a google docs at this link okay it's, uh, the slides are on the website you don't need to to read it where you need to write a small snippet containing the group composition so who are the people and the idea a title and a very short description and by very short it means very short uh, five lines six lines and so on trying to think about uh, the why the project you are proposing is an MEA system it's an ambient intelligence system and why is it an ambient system for mobility okay the second part is easier because you have to do something for agriculture, it's not. No, I, even agriculture is a good, uh, you know, a lot of moving tractors and something like that. Oh, I forgot that. Um, and we will discuss your proposals at the 18th of March. Okay? So try to be there at least one or two people per group. Mm -hmm. But it's better if everybody is there so that we can discuss if something's wrong, you can correct them on the spot. After this validation and feedback, uh, you will have another week uh, to come up with a final version. <coughs> and the format is just this. You just, you, this uh, as a, as a screenshot of the Google Doc. You just take this snippet, copy and paste, group number one, two, three, four, you just increase as you paste, uh, the composition of the group, project title, project description. Five, ten lines describing the project from the user's point of view again with me from the user's point of view how the users will benefit from the system not what the system is, done, is doing not how the system is working not what are the components of the system 
why the users are happy for what we are proposing. How are you helping people in their daily life? Of course, we are engineers. We, need, we must be sure that what we are proposing is feasible. But first of all, it must be useful. And let's try to describe it from the user point of view. Don't mention technologies nor devices. Okay, try to tell it to, to, to your grandmother. And have them say, I like it. Okay, that's definitely <coughs> details. So, from the user point of view, is what are the benefits for the users? What are the main features? What, is the, what the system is doing, not internally, for the user? And why should the user want it? And that, how does it blend in their daily life, as the definition said? It's not something in addition to. It's something that makes something already existing, some action, some behavior that is already existing, it makes it better. OK, so the suggestions are, is, uh, are to be creative, try to think outside the box. It may probably one of the last chances when you can do whatever you want and uh, develop the, your own ideas. Um, so try to really imagine strange scenarios are good. We don't uh, have to do any reality check, only checking the characteristic of the MA system, but maybe also be for the future or in a very strange setting on Mars. I don't know. Mobility on Mars. Why not? Uh, if, if there are some skills or some patience, that's why I, I, I was referring to the mechanical and automotive <coughs> engineers. Maybe I already have some feeling for these kind of topics. Try to exploit them in the project. So it's better because you know better and uh, you feel better whether whether you are what, we are what you are proposing is useful or not. Concentrate on two or three key features. I would say one, hmm? but then you get angry, angry with me, so I will do. I, I work two. Key features, not twenty-seven different features. What the users like and. Uh, Avoiding, uh, oh, this is uh, a warning for the future. Projects become more complicated if you have to integrate many devices, many different services of many different devices, adding new or different technologies. So uh, then you will, uh, you will wait, or oh, will have to spend a lot of time in writing code and software to integrate, to interface, because every device, every tool as a different interface so you need to write uh, and test and debug a lot of stuff so try to keep it simple focused narrow not many different devices because every device has different programming environments for the same reason and uh, try also to avoid projects that need a lot of data processing so projects for which you need for example to have uh, three months of collected data to analyze and to give an intelligent response Okay, but we don't have three months overall. So try to avoid projects where the behavior of the system depends on the analysis of a lot of data. Because then the problem would be how to collect those data. Unless those data are already available somewhere else, of course, we can exploit them. Hmm? So these are the warning points that may, might make the project more complex. And so we try to avoid them. Okay, finally, sorry for going a bit over the time. We can make a break. So we can start discussing uh, and uh, about these topics. Uh, we, we come back at uh, 4.40. So nearly 20 minutes break.